Goblin entry. So yeah, it's not case sensitive. So yeah, welcome everybody. This is the uh, 41st edition of the WoW Economy Weekly Wrap-Up. have a few topics to go through. And a second giveaway available on the post itself, because it is the final um, edition of the month. At the end of each month we do a, a giveaway on the blog post itself. So yeah, if you, as I say, if you are listening on the WoWhead homepage or the blog post itself, welcome, welcome. There is a game time giveaway active in the stream today for the weekly giveaway and there is a monthly giveaway on the blog post itself which we'll get to because I think it's going to be a bit more interesting and I'm sure many of you will be wanting to get involved. But yeah, as I say, 41st edition of the WoW Economy weekly wrap up. Uh, in this edition we're looking at the recent Battle for Azeroth beta changes as we do every week. There is a build every week at this point. Uh, we're going to take a look at some major gold making milestones as a couple of people shared their stories and um, achievements on the subreddit this week we're going to be taking a look at being efficient with your time as the saying goes time is money friend of course um, there's also the wormy tonkin's pet that's available for the next two weeks or so it's going to be the last time it's available before the expansion launches so it is a tradable pet and we'll have a look at that to see what that's all about. And of course, the monthly giveaway is going to be at the end of the blog post. If you're new to the series, um, all other 40 editions of the series is available on the Wowhead website. You can check the economy tag. Every single post is up here from the past. You can see last month's giveaway here had 187 entries. No, sorry, that was March's giveaway. Last month we had 421 entries for this one, which is pretty cool. I think this one got retweeted by the main Warcraft Twitter, so we had a few extra entries there. But this month I'm maybe expecting a few more than that, based on the prize. It is related to Battle for Azeroth. Anybody can take a guess at what it is. Um, but if anybody is new to the stream or just listening for the first time, um, my name is Gumdrops, I'm the lead moderator for the WoW Economy subreddit and the accompanying Discord server. Subreddit is approaching 50,000 subscribers now and the Discord server has just crossed over 26,000 members. So in the last week we've, we've gained another 1,000 members to the community which is absolutely amazing. If you are new to the community, welcome. I'm also the support manager and user evangelist for Trade Skill Master, the auction house add-on suite. Um, and in the blog post itself, I do hope to cover and showcase some of the interesting topics, discussions, content and guides that have been going on over the last week in the gold making community. Some of the stuff you might have missed, even as a veteran gold maker, or it might be stuff that you'll be interested in checking out for the first time as a new or aspiring goblin. Because I know a lot of people are looking to get involved in gold making, especially with WoW tokens going up in price. And other things you can buy with uh, with WoW gold and converting it into Blizzard Balance. Or Battle Net Balance. I guess they converted the name back. But as always, the format's not really that of a traditional guide. It's not going to be step-by-step -step instructions. It's kind of a... This is what's been happening, this is my commentary and opinion on it. And I'll have some links to further reading. Uh, along with videos and blog posts, etc. So just a quick reminder before we get into the first section. There is an active giveaway on the stream today. If you want to get involved and win a 30 days of WoW game time. Open to both EU and NA players. Do come into the chat and type the word goblin and also follow the stream and we'll be picking a winner for that at the end of the wowhead section of the stream today so do get involved in that but the first section of course is battle for azeroth beta there's been a new build and there's two major updates regarding uh, gold making on economy related stuff it's worth noting. The first one is the battle pet charms are changing in Battle for Azeroth. Uh, pet charms will be named shiny pet charms in Battle for Azeroth. Uh, this is a blue post that was listed a few days ago now. 
Uh, shiny pet charms continue to be acquired by doing pre-Battle for Azeroth battle pet content. And then a new currency has been added called polished pet charms. These aren't quite the same. Um, the vendors that sell battle pet items that are always useful have had their wares changed to acquire the new polished pet charms as currency. For example, the vendor in Dalaran now wants the new charms. And similar vendors who sell such items have had their costs adjusted as well. And vendors that sell things like unique pets or toys that have always required shiny pet charms will still require those shiny pet charms. For example, uh, the other NPC in Dalaran will still sell all of their pets and toys for shiny pet charms. And the shiny ones are the current charms that you can still get today and will continue to get um, by doing pre-Battle for Azeroth content. So what this means for you just kind of skipping ahead here. Always useful items will eventually move to the new currency so you don't feel obligated to do older content. If you still need pets from older content, they are purchasable with that content charm. So it's kind of a separation there. Uh, you can't mix and match them really. Um, there'll not be any conversion between the old and new charms and you're not going to lose any of the old charms when the expansion launches. They're going to persist and they're going to continue to be acquired uh, as time goes on. And the consensus in the community for these charms is to kind of follow the advice um, from the blue post and to spend the tokens now. It's particularly on battle training stones in order to level up the pets acquired in early legion that you can then use for your own pet battle purposes or to sell them on. Most likely going to be sold on if you are here as a gold maker. But that's always interesting. The stones themselves have been adjusted to have their cost increased from 45 to 60 pet charms as well. So it's going to be a little less uh, accessible or it's going to require a little bit more in terms of uh, charms to get. I'm not sure how many of you guys are actually involved in pet battling itself. Or if you're more focused on trading the pets without doing any battling or leveling, it's not always necessary to, to min-max the pets themselves to sell. You can just acquire the pets at any level and uh, sell them on. And we'll talk a little bit about that later in uh, the time efficiency section. The next major update from the beta is of course the Zulgarub reputation. Uh, return and therefore also the return of the recipes that come from those uh, from those reputations. The original rep recipes were lost um, in Cataclysm. Uh, they were no longer obtainable at the time and they're still no longer obtainable at the moment but they will be returning in Battle for Azeroth since the most recent beta builds have added three new NPCs at the Zoldazar docks. Rin Woshaw the Trader, uh, Maywiki and Exal. All three NPCs were present at the Yojamba Isle by the coast of Stranglethorn Vale and are now at the Zoldazar docks in the Yojamba Exchange. Um, the return of these NPCs and their dialogue about the Paragons of Power may indicate a new way to obtain reputation with the currently removed Zandalar tribe, allowing players to once again obtain Hero of the Zandalari tribe, which is the exalted reputation achievement. And it'll be another reputation to help towards the 100 exalted reputation achievements that's being added in the next expansion to get the new esteemed uh, title, which is I think one I'm going to go for myself. Seems like a, a cool one to add to the collection. More importantly, in the beta, the NPCs are not hostile to Alliance players, so it's possible for players from both faction to once more acquire reputation and old recipes from them. So there's quite a list of removed recipes that are going to be making a comeback. Uh, lots of enchanting, tailoring, leatherworking, blacksmithing, alchemy, and engineering recipes. Some uh, schematics, some goggles, uh, the blood soul set, primal bat skin, blood vine, um, dark soul set for blacksmithing. And I do believe each of these will have unique appearances, so it's going to be worth uh, worth getting in on these. Certainly going to be one of my objectives to collect these recipes. Are you seeing those pets somehow? Yes, indeed, Miss Sankit. 
Looked like a typo investing in stones level at pets acquired in early legion is a bit redundant since early legion was two years ago. Yes, that's right, Sforkas. I do need to change that to Battle of Azeroth, not early legion. That's uh, that's not correct. Thank you for pointing that out. How's it going, Arganth? Hope you're doing well today. Let me quickly fix that, actually. Don't want to leave that kind of typo up for too long. Where are we at? Early battle for Azeroth. There we go. Save that. So let's head back to the post. There we go, that's fixed. Thanks for looking out for me there, Sforkast. Much appreciated. But yeah, quite an extensive list of new recipes. Or well, not new, I guess, but returning recipes. And they each require different uh, reputation requirements. So you get some at friendly, some at honored, and some at revered. And I'm sure some people will already have some kind of level of reputation with the faction if they play it back in vanilla. So it shouldn't be too long to pick up the recipes. Leather wicking ones were laugh, you can't get the materials, so hopefully they'll be bringing those back on. Yeah, that should be kind of a follow on to returning of the recipes, they'll bring the materials back in some form as well. But if they don't, it'll be interesting to see that they'll prepare to do this, just for collection purposes. Uh, but then again, it is the beta, this might not make it to live, so this could all change before the expansion launch. No problem at all, Alizara. Welcome back to the Goblin Club, and uh, hopefully see you again soon. But yeah, I do think this is a fantastic move in and of itself. I always like to see no longer obtainable stuff being brought back in some capacity, even if it's from a reputation or from a quest line like we saw in Legion. Brought back some of the Cataclysm weapons, I believe, blacksmithing. But yeah, discussion point for this first section is how many Exalted Reputations do you guys have? Um, did any of you pick up the recipes before they were removed? And if so, have you sold any of the crafted items from the recipes since they were removed? And what are your plans for pets in Battle for Azeroth? Whether you plan on leveling a bunch of pets? Um, or just focus on trading them? Are you going to go out and collect all the pets in the new expansion as a priority? Or are you going to focus on other things? before you get to the pets. No yes, some no a little, my answers to recipes. Okay, sounds good, right one two. I think that's a good strategy. But yeah, that was a quick update on the latest beta build for Battle for Azeroth. Two major points there. Pet charms are changing and return of some recipes from an old reputation. So now that we've hit the Second section, just a quick reminder to everybody listening, there is a giveaway active in the stream today. You want to win 30 days of WoW game time. It's open to both EU and NA players. Just have to come and type the word Goblin in the chat and follow the stream. I'll be picking a winner after we finish chatting through the WoWhead section. But there is a second giveaway on the blog post itself, so do stick around but when we get to that part. How's it going, Carcosa? And what's up, Shadowfend? Hope you guys are doing well today. Thanks for stopping by. So this section is a bit more of a longer one. We have some major milestones and achievements. Oh, this player wealth shouldn't be in there, actually. I decided against that part for this week. You break it, you buy it. Um, but yeah, major milestones. I think it's worthwhile checking out what other people have been doing to make their gold and more often than not, people are very welcome to share, or very eager to share their stories and share their strategies ah, once they've hit some milestones. So this first milestone today is from Mocha Boys. He's a tr trusted goblin on the WoW Economy subreddit, um, and I featured some of his posts on the blog uh, in the past. And he shared an annotated graph uh, this week and described their journey to 7 million liquid gold. So there's a few things to start out with regarding the context of this. This is across nine months of gaming or playing WoW. Uh, they started off with a single level 60 priest and with 25,000 gold seed money from a generous goblin on their server. Um, 
They eventually increased that to six characters. I'm guessing max level characters because uh, he does all the holes. Uh, and 7 million liquid gold. And they're all on a low pop server, Rune Totem Uther. I guess that's a US server rather than an EU server. Um, but they got caught in the trap of, okay, I made my first million, now what? To which the answer was easy, go make another. So 1 million became 2, 2 became 4, and around that point they started to seriously consider finishing the run to gold cap. And I think that happens to a lot of people. Once you make your first million gold, it doesn't take too much more effort to get to your second million because once you've got a bit of money or a bit of gold to spend you can start not being more risky but the amount of gold you can put in with a similar amount of risk obviously generates a bit more profits so they kind of overview uh, some of the sources of revenue um, as I say they do maxed order holes running speed bills Focused on reputation tokens, gold, and pet charms. Uh, they make enough from disenchanting braces and will quests. They can fuel um, order hall resources to all the characters. Um, all of the characters have eight champion max specifically for bringing in extra order hall resources. And that's about 35 to 40k per week of mostly passive income per character. So if you're doing six characters, these kind of numbers, you'll be making a token every other week if not faster, with a, a group of max level characters. And I think it's going to be a similar situation in the next expansion. So if you do have an alt army, um, you're probably going to be looking to uh, level them up once again in Battle for Azeroth and start doing some mission tables for gold. Um, it has three jewel crafters, uh, three enchanters, one leather worker, one tailor, one alchemist, um, and a character with Cooking, and that's cooking with two U's, of course, because of my accent. I know a buyer when I see one. Oh, I forgot about the uh, the image embed here. Let me see if I can fix this quickly because it's not going to show up on Imager, is it? Let's see here. So I have embedded like a screenshot of his trade skill master. Uh, where are we? And it's not going to make much sense if I can't see the image. Uh, I can't remember where the, uh, oh here it is, gallery. Let me just fix this quickly here. I need to save the image and then upload it once again to Wowhead itself. Otherwise, it's not going to display properly. So, I'll start upload, grab the image, and replace it on the blog, and that'll this will make much more Generous. sense. Thanks. Oh my goodness! New best coming in with the eight month resub. Thank you so much for the support. Welcome back to the Goblin Club. I see some goblins in the chat while I fix this uh, image. Because I'm a professional streamer and professional blogger all at the same time. Okay, I save that there. And I'll refresh on Firefox. There we go. So, the image is loading correctly now. I hope I didn't link any more imager stuff further down, but I'm sure we'll get to that. So anyway, just going back through the professions that the Mocha Boys had. Three jewel crafters, three enchanters, one leather worker, one tailor, one alchemist, some cooking and fishing. Uh, they didn't do very much fishing, but when they did, it was mostly to supply themselves for materials for the lavish Surma feasts. But it is generally pretty lucrative to be fishing for stuff. Not a lot of people do that, and I think it's going to be worthwhile doing so at the launch of BFA as well. As people are needing those materials. But the timeline is interesting. They started off here um, nine months ago. Did they say nine months? Yeah, they did. Nine months of, of gold making. You can see it took a little while to kind of get things going. But then once it got a bit of momentum, uh, they, they reached some, some pretty nice 
record highs and then obviously decided to invest in some stuff but they go into quite a lot of detail on what each of these numbers mean what they refer to and what was going on around these times so around number one and two at the start starting with 25,000 gold worked on flipping some materials and selling farmed materials of their own primarily herbalism stuff the dip between one and two was when they blew 50% of their bankroll on 180,000 golds of worth of Starlight Rose, which I then, which he then turned around and sold for 600,000 golds. So that was nice, but that kept them cash poor for quite some time. I think that's an important lesson there. If you don't have very much capital, you don't really want to be investing all of your gold into one particular trade or one particular market. Uh, you need to be sure to keep around some gold um, to be able to invest with and play with and be able to kind of repost your stuff on the auction house. If you run out of gold and you can't really do much with that, so don't kind of you tie up all of your gold in one thing. How's it going, Shawnee? And this TSM4 coming out. We do hope to bring out TSM4 before the launch of BFA, so not very long left to go for waiting for that. We're just going to carry on chatting through the Wowhead blog here. We've got um, Mocha Boys story on reaching 7 million liquid gold and describing what was happening on their gold charts over the course of nine months. So number three at this point here, um, they discovered TSM, started picking up Transmog and 101 BOEs, but they didn't really know what, what they were doing from three to four and made most of their money at this stage selling of all things food. So cooking is a fantastic profession, it's been quite strong for the majority of the expansion, even today uh, it, even if it's not like massively profitable per item it's still selling in terms of volume so it's still worth crafting some of the food as the expansion winds down so that was between three and four you can see a little spike here up to I believe 700k or so uh, obviously including the Starlight Rose that they sold uh, number four this was right around the holiday event the winter's veil vale, grumpus stuff so they sunk nearly everything that they had into medallions and mounts and then has since turned all those around for double the profit but that's kind of a long-term investment i probably wouldn't have suggested anybody um doing this this is probably very risky for them especially on a low population server um, obviously those particular items are profitable and definitely will be in the long term but again you don't really want to tie up all of your gold you in want. one particular thing. The party starts when the gum drops. U N Z U N Z U N Z baby U N Z U N Z U N Z U N Z. What's up, White Fox? Thank you very much for the three month resub. Enjoy Generous. your new badge in the chat. Thanks. I owe you one. Love and me some gum drops. There's also a Muffin coming in with the seven month resub. Thank you very much for using your Twitch Prime on the stream. I see some goblins in the chat. Muffin and White Fox. Hope you guys are doing well today. Ignis is uh, in the chat confirming uh, cooking as being a great profession. 45% of your profit, Ignis, in Legion was from cooking, while having a total profit of 59 million gold. That's fantastic. That's a very, very nice number. And I think cooking is also going to be very strong in Battle for Azeroth. Even if it's just at a similar level as Legion, there's not nothing really like new and exciting about uh, cooking. I got the best deals anyway. But the expansion. But yeah, just at the chart here, haven't quite reached a million gold on Mocha Boy's chart because they invested pretty much everything into Grumpus and Medallion of the Legions, um, which was probably risky, but it did work out for them, which is great. Uh, at the number five mark, getting back up to the 750k. Um, they started dipping toes into Antor's BOEs. I'm sure Jack would appreciate any kind of dipping. Uh, but they were ex expanding their collection of pretty much everything around this time. They spun up a second character and used Legion Boost to shoot the character to level 110. So up until this point, up until number 5, Mocha Boys was only using one character. So hadn't quite reached the million gold. But as soon as they got the second character with a boost to level 110, obviously you're expanding your markets, you're ex able to access more things, you're able to do more stuff. And you can see between number 5 and 6, they did actually reach the 1.5 million gold mark. Just after getting that second character. Um, so at the number 6 mark, they dropped about a million gold 
to stock up on Antor's BUEs, all of which were sold at huge profits. Also bought out a, a bottle boxer dump of 300,000 Starlight Rose. So again, reinvesting in stuff that they already know is selling well and has been able to sell well in the past. So there was a lot of stock available. Who knows where it came from on the auction house. Um, but Mocha Boys understood that they were able to buy that kind of thing uh, in the past and profit from it so they were able to make the decision to do it again um, without too much of a risk as it would have been much more risky to do that at the beginning since they, that's all the gold they had basically. So that was at the number 6 mark right here so that you can see the massive drop in gold back down to 750 but very 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 quickly they reached back to the same point that they were probably 2-3 two, two, weeks ago. Um, and able to recover recover some gold there. So as I said before, if you do have a little bit of gold already, you can spend that and make more gold, but if you don't have the gold to spend, it's going to take you a little bit longer to start generating some, some profits, as you see at the beginning of the chart here. Uh, number 8 on the chart, which is at the very high point, or the very first high point, uh, was their record as money was starting to roll in faster than they could reinvest it. It was at this point that they realized they needed to scale up operations and look for more passive streams of income at which point um, they bought enough tokens to boost four characters. So that's the next massive drop there back down to the number six levels back under 1.5 million. Let's have a look at the full size image here. Why isn't that loading? There it is. So. They were at uh, just under 4 million gold at the number 8 mark and they dropped back down to under 1.5 million in order to buy tokens uh, to boost some more characters. So that's where they have 6 characters at this point, all at level 110, all having um, order halls, all chaining out gold missions. Yeah, so they, they spent a couple of months running the, all the characters through Argus Quest Lines to max out the order halls. Uh, but they had a surprisingly good time just playing them in general, which is always good uh, if you can enjoy what you're doing for gold making as well. That's obviously just as important. At the number 9 mark, they discovered enchanting and jewel crafting. So up until this point, they perhaps didn't have access to all the professions. But you can see once they did pick up those two professions, you'll see a sharp increase in revenue or profits even. Let's change this music here. Yeah, it's a little bit over the top. Probably turn it down a touch as well. There we go. So at the number 9 mark they picked up more professions and started making profits there. At the number 10 mark this is when the auction house API was down or rather the, the mobile auction house went offline. Uh, even though that they couldn't play they kept reposting via the mobile auction house made about 1.4 million ah, just selling things like enchants, rep reputation medallions and the odd BOE. So you can see this large jump in gold at the number 10 mark was when the uh, mobile auction house went down or went offline and then between number 10 and 11 has been the kind of momentum continuing. Everything's just been on autopilot, all the order halls maxed, food kept stocked from cooking and chance and jewel crafting all kept stocked. This is where the importance of diversity comes into play so something, sometimes and uh, no enchant sells, some days no food sells, but having that many sellable items across that many different markets, something always sells. And that's a very good point. That's kind of one of the mantras on the stream and my blogs and anywhere basically. Diversification is key. The more markets you're in, the more profitable opportunities you're going to be able to benefit from basically. And that's where Mocha Boys is today. 7.3 million liquid gold. Uh, ready for whatever profit opportunities Battle for Azeroth throws at us. So I thought that was quite interesting, kind of documenting starting off from very low um, beginnings, 25,000 investment basically, and kind of documenting the uh, the path to 7 million, not too far away from the gold cap. And once you're at this point, it doesn't take you too long to get to that 10 million liquid gold. So that's the first milestone. Just a quick reminder guys, there is a giveaway active on the stream today. So if you'd like to win uh, 30 days of WoW game time, uh, do click through into the stream and type the word goblin. 
You do have to be following the stream as well in order to win and we'll be picking a winner once we get to the end of the wowhead pause. So we're about halfway through the second segment of four. So we'll be uh, probably finishing things up in about 25-30 minutes ah, or so. Potential customer. Uh, there is a second milestone of uh, 20 million gold over the last 18 months or so. Uh, so from a guy called Lipsy, or a person called Lipsy. I didn't really have any additional commentary for this. This is a very good read. I'll pop a link directly to this in the chat as well if you want to check it out. This was posted on the WoW Economy subreddit. And I just like these styles, so I wanted to present his or her style rather, not, not yet to assume. But um, yeah, they introduced themselves, read it in a top 100 guild on a medium pop EU realm, um, which is quite interesting. I think that's maybe not the average player in a top 100 guild, but medium population is certainly um, easily replicated. But they learned to make gold uh, from understanding trading in EVE. So EVE was brought up last week as well regarding the WoW tokens and Plex and stuff. Um, pretty cutthroat, ruthless economy in EVE, which is always interesting to read about from a distance. Um, so they got their feet wet there and went bonkers completely when they failed the economics at university and sub subsequently had more free time than they could, they could handle, which is, I think is, is a funny starting point. They, they failed the uh, economics degree at university, but they're here sharing information how to make gold in World of Warcraft, so... So they shared some of their trading principles. They enjoy making gold, and I think that's a key thing that a lot of people don't understand. I have seen some comments and discussions in the community from people who are just joining the community saying why are you making gold why don't you just go and work another hour shift or two hours at your actual job uh, and just buy tokens but there's no fun or no joy in, in doing that which I 100% agree with that's why I do the, the gold making it's, it's an interesting and fun aspect of the game And it's uh, often quite difficult for people to understand that outside of the goblin and gold making community if they're kind of looking in from the outside. But yeah, one of his key principles is recognizing the value of things and a bit on opportunity costs. So every looted item has value. This is especially true for items that can't be sold like Bloods of Sargeras. Uh, on the WoW Economy subreddit, we can often read about goblins having uh, people uh, craft items for them using bloods, but not being paid for the blood. The same goes for raid BOEs. If you're just giving them to friends, you might as well give them the 200,000 gold they are worth, which nobody does. Of course, for me, that's once progression is over. So, opportunity cost is very key as well regarding um, understanding the items you acquire yourself it's inherently have a value, that they're not just something to give away for free. And that's kind of a big step to become a gold maker slash goblin slash wow economist type thing. Otherwise you'll be shooting yourself in the foot more often than not. What's up Conquer Tank? Muffin says I have tons of joy in my job but that statement also assumes everyone is paid hourly. Yeah exactly. About uh, well, People don't have access to that more often than not. There's, there's youngsters playing the game or people don't have uh, a job that they're able to do that. What's up Alpha Test? I see you've, you've got your entry in, you don't have to type it in again. Once we uh, get to the end of the Wowhead section we'll be announcing the winner. Um, another key principle for Lipsis is uh, no risk, basically. Uh, they don't take any risks. They actually think that TSM is not very good for them. So I don't think they've been using it most of the time, which is always interesting. Regional values for them compared to their server is at best inaccurate and at worst wrong, which I have seen definitely on other services like um, Wow Auction and what was the other old one? I can't remember the name. Um, but yeah, maybe I can chat to this guy or this person and help them set up TSM a little bit for their own purposes. They don't do any weekly reset trading. 
then don't do any full market resets uh, but that might be because they're the one to crash them for fun and profit which is fair enough i think once you've got to a certain point uh, you can't Generous. basically have nice. fun with with there markets i'm heating a pizza at the moment <laughs> sounds good dr chicken nipples how's it going thank you so much for the seven month resub that's very kind of you let's see some uh some more goblins in the chat for dr chicken nipples still one of the best names on twitch very much appreciated So yeah, managing your risk is another important factor. Being a gold maker, as I've said earlier, you don't want to invest all of your gold in one thing. You want to save yourself some gold to kind of have a bit of a backup or a little bit of a buffer. Uh, this is something I actually um, adhere to, low auction count slash high value items, especially regarding transmog. Um, this is where medium pop realm comes into play for the uh, philipsis. Prices are higher overall, but sale rate is slower in return. Uh, they'd rather um, trade on a high pop, or rather be on a medium pop server than a high pop realm. Um, if the profit for an auction isn't at least four digits, they don't bother with it, which is kind of being more of the um, efficient with your time, which will come up again later. Uh, they definitely don't like reposting dozens of stack, even once a day. This doesn't happen on other realms because margins are lower, but it's their thing on medium pop. Uh, on average, they have less than 10 active auctions, which is very interesting. Um, I don't think I've heard of anybody kind of sticking to that kind of number, especially that low. Um, but yeah, obviously th they've got results and that's the important part there. Thanks for popping in, Game Cats. Hope to see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Am I eligible for the giveaway if I'm not in chat? Uh, yeah, as long as you're around when we draw the winner, um, that's that's all good. We'll probably be drawing the winner in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. Uh, but yeah, they also provided kind of a breakdown of what they did to make gold. Uh, doing Bloods, Bloods of Sargeras and Primal Sargerite. They're doing Obliterum, they're doing order halls, they're doing raid BOEs and some professions here and there. So I'm not going to go super into detail to each of the sections. So we've already kind of had a breakdown on uh, on the first story. But basically, um, Lipsis definitely utilised Bloods of Sargeras. Uh, and they actually also recommend crafting legendary still. Um, their crafting cost is around about 10,000 gold with the Bloods, which might be a little bit on the low side, but they're still selling legendaries at 80 ah, to 100,000 gold, uh, which is around about 1,300 gold per Blood, even as the expansion starts drawing to an end. So you've got to be stockpiling the commissions if you are wanting to craft legendaries. And you can craft multiple legendaries per reset if you're doing Mythic Plus uh, whenever you feel like it. They've also been shuffling um, the shoulders from Fiendish Spaulders. Even though it requires two Primal Sargerite, you get two Obliterum worth of Ash from uh, obliterating the shoulders. That's another nice little shuffle. And Fiendish Leather, Light Weave and Unbroken Tooth are normally dirt cheap on most servers, so these are very cheap to make, despite the Primal Saga rides. Speaking of the Obliterum, uh, they've only been selling stacks of 10. Uh, they never aggressively undercut, and each sale was anywhere from 4,000 to 10,000 gold of profit. Um, uh, that's maybe three sales a day on average, and I think I prefer to have those less frequent sales, but higher profit margins. Uh, posting in different stack sizes. I do the same thing with my alchemy, my cooking, and anything that kind of has variable stack sizes to kind of cover the different aspects of the market. Let me log in in the background here before we get disconnected. Obviously, they do order halls as well. Not much to kind of say on that topic. We've covered all order halls very often on the blog, and there's lots of guides and ways to maximize and make those super efficient. Uh, in the past, you were able to utilize the Nathersim Tome of Manipulation to boost your reputation. Uh, that was nerfed a while ago though, but you could get two reputation token missions, yield the bonus emissary chest, 
on your sub 110 alt which 100% contains 6 to 1000 gold and resources. This item shall be a reminder to always keep an eye out for optimizing a gold gain. So yeah, you've got to be looking out for these kind of things. I got the um, best deals anywhere. To min max the order halls. And as I say, order halls, or well not order halls, but the mission table specifically is returning in BFA. So if you do have an alt army, you're going to be leveling up, up again, ready for the gold making missions in BFA. Raid BOEs as well. Um, obviously those markets are particularly lucrative and profitable while the content is current. You're probably not going to make much gold on the likes of Trial of Valor or Nighthold BOEs at this point in the expansion. And even August stuff now is starting to trend down as guilds are finished clearing the content. Um, and uh, not raiding as much. But yeah, raid BOEs as the raid tier is current for the couple of months that it is the latest raid and um, those BOEs are going to be very very valuable and people who are getting them don't often have any auction house add-ons to post stuff so they're posting it at the wrong price or they're undercutting the wrong item level uh, and you're able to pick those off the auction house for cheap and repost them at their actual value and make some nice profits there. So they did a few professions, but not too much compared to the, what my strategy involves, which is primarily professions. Um, they did a little bit of gathering, and they do jewel crafting crowns. And since it is a lower population server, they don't have much competition in these markets. So there's often a little bit more profit to be made on those kind of things. But yeah, that was about 20 million gold over 18 months or so just chatting through um, some ellipsis's strategies they did a little bit of boosting on the side as well bit of heroic uh, boosting maybe some mythic plus in there as well but that was about another six million in revenue and this kind of income does obviously allow people to pay for their sub and uh, other blizzard purchases which i'm sure a lot of you guys do already and of course getting enough gold ready for the auction house mount or the auctioneer mount uh, in battle for azeroth so yeah I, I like the guys um format and the way they were chatting about the gold making so i thought i'd feature this post on the blog i'll also link to this in the chat as well copy link there we go So that's the end of the second section. Discussion points for this part. And I hope you're paying attention to the, the discussion points because these are gonna be important at the end of the blog. It's not a test, but I'm sure you wanna be paying attention to what they are. Um, what is your guys, uh, or what has been your guys most recent gold making milestone? Have you just hit 1 million? Have you just hit 10 million? Have you just hit 50 million? Have you just started and made your first 10,000? What's been your biggest achievement so far or your most recent one? Um, if you have reached a milestone, what are you aiming for next? And if you're not already actively gold making, which I'm sure most of you guys are, in the chat at least, are you planning to start in the next expansion? What's your strategies and what's your plans for, for gold making in the future? Just go and buy it. Hey, what's up, Senpai? And Agent Rusky, I hope you're doing well today. Milestone is 1 billion liquid, not much left. What are you at now, Simpai? And how many mounts have you got in stock? Just past 1 million today, very nice Kojak, congrats. Auction House Mount is the dream. Uh, baby Goblin, but man, is that thing nice. Yeah, it certainly looks good. 784 million liquid gold, Simpai. That's, uh, that's a very, very high number. I'd imagine that's spread across pretty much every server on the EU at this point. Blood to enter the WoW head giveaway, but my verification email is stuck in the twist and nether. Well, don't worry, there's going to be a week uh, time period for entries, so I'm sure you'll be able to get your account fixed uh, before then. More than one account? Yeah, I'd imagine uh, that was right.
Uh, Simpai doesn't multi-box, it's all about trading the TCG stuff and all the rare, no longer obtainable stuff. Hey, what's up Tafu? Welcome to the stream. Thanks so much for uh, for stopping by today. Let's give a warm welcome to Tafu. He's just getting back into World of Warcraft. I got the best deals anywhere. And thank you for the follow. Finally sitting on 1 million. Congratulations, Clayton. That's fantastic. I always love to hear all of your guys' major milestones and achievements, especially if you've been uh, checking out the Wowhead blog or being part of the Reddit and Discord communities for a while. Because a lot of you guys join in when you're brand new and it's, uh, it's always good fun to see how everything is going for you guys. One million is a nice feeling milestone. It certainly is, regardless. Once you got your first million, it's much easier to get your second million. And it kind of escalates from there. My most recent milestone senpai was 20 million liquid. But since I started my new job, I haven't really been keeping me up to date with my auction house stuff. So things have been kind of stagnant for a little while. But since I've been able to do my blog, I've been keeping up to date with what's happening in the community. And before we get into the third section today, just a quick reminder. There is a giveaway active in the stream today. If you'd like to win yourself 30 days of WoW game time, open to both EU and NA players, just type the word goblin in the chat and make sure to follow the stream to qualify as a winner. And we'll be picking a winner at the end of the WoWhead section today. Probably about 15 minutes time or so. Are you feeling okay? I certainly am, senpai. I uh, have to take some time to read all of you. I had weekly blogs starting from week one. I hope to have some time in the first week of June, just being so busy. Keep in mind that there's probably going to be some higher level topics that are in there, but most of it is like the leading topics are going to be relevant for that week. Like there may be some activities in the game or there might be some uh, news that was relevant for that week. So you don't have to read through 100% of each blog, um, but certainly feel free to ask any questions if you have them as you go. Jack's milestones was the spider mount. You get game time. The next milestone is the dino mount. Nice. I think a lot of goblins are going to be picking that up for sure. So, third section of the blog today. Time is money, of course, as the saying goes. And as a follow-up to the major milestone from Mocha Boys we discussed earlier, uh, they outlined some of the time investment that went into the achievements that they described above in the blog post. Yep. So, as a reply to the comment or to the thread, uh, TSTivo or TSTivo91 asks for more details on how much time that took. Um, asking how did they manage the time, i.e. today I will farm fishing materials for my food sales, tomorrow I will mine off my jewel crafting. How do you decide where to categorize your time and how to do your gold making strategies? For me personally, I think it's important to have a routine. Even if you're not primarily focusing on gold making, if you want to be making gold, you want to be doing something regularly and in a manner that you can keep on top of it uh, and, and kind of keep it consistent. So you should have tasks um, that you need or want to do to help you maintain your strategies, whether you're doing your daily cooldowns on your professions or you're reposting stuff at specific times of the day or keeping on top of your missions on the go with the mobile app. Forming habits in pursuit of your goals for gold making will definitely help you achieve them much quicker. If you're if you're deciding to do profession stuff and you're forgetting to do your daily cooldowns every day, it's not going to help you in the long run because uh, obviously you're not using those materials. How's it going, Sean? Hope you're doing well today. Everyone's milestone there. Here is the dip from your jack. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but not only that, as the saying does go, time is money, you have to be efficient with your time. It's not a great idea to spend your available time doing something that will generate or will not generate as much profit as a result. I'm missing a word here on the blog. Let me, uh, I'll fix that a lot later. But having said that, it's unfair to expect everyone to do the 100% most efficient and profitable thing, otherwise that wouldn't be the case anymore. Um, if everybody was doing the same thing, it wouldn't be as profitable and it's not going to be as efficient anymore. So Mocha Boy shares some more insight on their strategies regarding time investment. Um, their key is understanding one. your limits and being honest with yourself about exactly how much time you want to spend on any given activity. You can say that you're logging into the game and you say I want to spend 10 minutes doing gold making stuff but that's not going to really get you very far unless you've already got like a massive empire You've got a lot of liquid gold uh, to invest in stuff. 
Um, and often, as I say, people do want to spend the least amount of time possible. I personally don't farm other than in the past on my Friday farming streams. Um, but there's definitely nothing wrong with farming as a beginner to pick up some materials to sell on the auction house um, or just trade directly to players uh, to build up your starting capital. Obviously, you could spend four hours farming Starlight Rose and pull in 15,000 gold per hour, but it would be much cooler if you spent four minutes scanning the auction house and picking up deals for flips or stocking up on cheap materials. Um, so that's the kind of stuff Simpai does. Doesn't do any farming, it just buys the high value stuff and relists them for more gold. Uh, even if they're posted at a general uh, average value. I like mixing farming in auction house. Yeah, if you do enjoy farming, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. A lot of people use farming as kind of a, a switch off, kind of stress relieving activity. They don't have to engage with anything, they just kind of go out and grind some, some mobs and loot some stuff. A lot of people find some some pleasure in that, which is totally totally fine and cool. And if you're making a bit of gold at the end of the day from that, then that's totally cool too. And again, it's important for people to understand the opportunity costs of their decisions, um, which we discussed a little bit earlier. It's uh, yeah, as you say, you could be spending some time farming stuff, but it's not going to be as efficient at the end of the day is, is doing some flips and stuff like that. You only farm Dreamleaf to get your glyph prices low and it's a chill farm. Yeah, those kind of things, once you've got kind of a routine for the farm itself, you, as I say, you can kind of switch off. Obviously you're watching the game and you maybe got some Netflix on on a second screen or you're watching some broadcast somewhere. I'm sure some of you guys right now are farming in the game, just hanging out listening to the stream, which is cool. I love Warlock Monk FK farms, never need to buy masks because I stocked up on anything I sell, yeah. Hey, what's up Lady Elno? Hope you're doing well today. So, Mocha Boys typical week, they raid three nights a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, run Priest and Warlock through Heroics, and then Garothi. All three bosses are normal LFR for Pantheon trinkets. So for those three nights, most of the time spent is raiding. So that's not really gold making related. I think that's a bulk, bulk of time. Netflix and Goblin, yeah, something like that muffin. Might have to make an emote for that. I can certainly imagine it. So for order halls, I think we've discussed this a number of times. 90% of the time you can do all of your order hall stuff on the go with the Legion Companion application. Uh, you can cycle through all the missions up to three times a day and it doesn't take too long to do you just quickly open the application start the missions and uh, close the application you don't have to kind of manage your followers you don't have to do anything with the champions uh, or anything like that um, but yeah mocha boys just goes on to con continue uh, describing what kind of time they spend in the game um, talking about restocking, it is a low population server that they are on, uh, so they don't have to restock multiple times a day. You could purchase a bunch of stock and materials uh, over a course of a weekend, like on off-peak times, and have enough materials in stock to kind of last you with all of your crafts for a couple of weeks on that kind of server. Uh, if you want a super duper high pot server, you may have to restock a little bit more frequently. Uh, which, if you do have the time to do so, will obviously generate more profits. But if you're not up for that, you don't have to. And if you're on a very low pop server, then you don't really have much of a choice in those situations. But the whole point of Mocha Boy's particular setup was to specifically rather uh, choose markets that require the least investment in time so they could actually play the game and not just work the auction house day in and day out. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, as in working the auction house day in and day out. If you don't do anything else in the game, like myself at the moment, I stop raiding, I don't do any PvP, um, I don't do any Mythic Plus anymore, kind of burnt myself out on that. But yeah, auction house primarily is my focus in the game at the moment. 
The only thing that they mention, as it should be obvious, is to make TSM work for you to take all the decision making out of the posting and reposting process. Um, which is maybe something that Lipsis could investigate a little bit further. Um, if they were to, to go through and kind of customize TSM to their own liking and their own preferences, I'm sure they would um, be a little bit more of a fan of TSM. But Mocha Boys doesn't bother doing any resets, the same as what Lips has said. Um, it's too risky uh, or just not worth the time more, more often than not. And I think this last line here is the most important one. Uh, reposting so often that they catch the high of the markets and the low of the markets and still turn a profit. Um, so as we've always said on stream, as long as you're averaging out with a profit at the end of the day, you're definitely on the right path. It doesn't matter if you lose out on some items or markets, a price might drop here and there, but that should never affect you to the point of halting your gold making. Um, as you said, today even as well, diversification is key, and if everything you're doing is profitable on average, then you're totally fine. I think that's the, the important point. Um, at some level, you're going to be doing such a variety of things to make gold that you can't micromanage everything that you post. Using TSM itself to prepare your posting prices ahead of time, ensuring that you only post at a profitable price point will help you spend less time with the logistics of the auction house um, and be an additional layer of efficiency. So if you're able to just collect all of your items from your bags or from your mailbox and just list it all up on your auction house according to rules that you prepare ahead of time, uh, you don't have to kind of micromanage at that level to say, well, I want to post this at this price, I want to post that at another price and all that kind of stuff. Um, you're not looking to maximize and squeeze out every copper of profit, which you could attempt to do with a couple of items at a time, which I think is what Lipsis was describing in his story, or his or her story. You're simply looking to make that average profit in the long run. A good example of this is Pet Trader Extraordinaire Vadis, aka, AKA Reth 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 on Twitter. Um, he pays no attention to the level or breed of a pet because it simply takes too much time. So interestingly, Bregg uh, has put out a video this week as well on the same topic, sharing what he does in terms of time management and what kind of time investment uh, he has in the game as a gold maker. Um, I definitely recommend checking out Bregg vids on YouTube, some great content there. And this week's uh, video matches up with this time theme uh, on the blog, so I thought I'd feature this one for this week as well. So discussion point for this section, the third section of four. How much time do you guys dedicate to gold making? Is it your primary focus in the game? Uh, or is it just kind of a secondary thing? Would you prefer to spend more or less time making gold uh, uh, today or in the future? Uh, and if it is not your primary or only reason for playing World of Warcraft, what other things do you do in World of Warcraft? Uh, besides gold making. If you're not a gold maker, what is the main activities? Uh, that you get up to inside the game. Be curious to hear. So that was the end of the third section. Another quick reminder that there is an active giveaway before we start off on the fourth and final section of the blog. If you'd like to get involved and win 30 days of WoW game time, do click through into the stream if you're listening on the WoWhead homepage or on the blog post itself. Uh, and type the word goblin in the stream chat and make sure to follow the stream Otherwise, the uh, the winner will be re-rolled if you're not following. If you don't win the game time, there is a second giveaway uh, going to be on the blog post itself. I hope you've been paying attention to the discussion points because they're going to play a big part of it once you get to the end of the blog. Hey, what's up, Smokebird? Good to see you. I'm a gold farmer and a myth creator at the same time. That's interesting, Kojak. I was the same for a while, but I stopped the raiding and I'm now just a gold maker. Shadowfend's an arena player. How's it going, Shadowfend? Not as much time as I would like to, but I typically start my WoW day cycling through the auction house tunes before going on to the main to do farming and world quests and whatever else I want to fill my time with. Maybe check the tunes depending on how long I play, but also check them again before logging off for the day. That's fair enough. Just kind of keeping on top of everything. It's EUS and EU. Yes, that's right, Ox Lotus. The giveaway is open to both EU and NA players. Any more word on TSM4 beta invites? Hopefully another round is going out soon, Raven. Definitely keep an eye out on the uh, Discord server. I'm an achievement farmer and new to gold making. Nice one. Well, welcome to the stream, Fandak. 
glad he can join us. How much total gold do you have? Oh, currently just over 21 million gold liquid, I think. Bring up my bags here. Yeah, 21.7 million across my characters, and that's primarily primarily through professions. Um, well, pretty much exclusively through professions. Covering all the different markets in uh, each profession, both old school and current content. But I certainly don't feel like I'm a big goblin at this point. There's people out there that do much more than me and have much more gold than me in uh, different areas. Hey, what's up, Jimbo? Hope you're doing well today. So, final and fourth section of the blog is a bit of a quick one. It's just a reminder for you guys, um, a quick tip from Kurugar, another trusted goblin in the community, uh, that the Wormy Tunkin's pet is active for the last time before Battle for Azeroth launches and it is a pet that you can trade um, and you can get the pet on multiple characters if you were so inclined to do so. The way you attain this pet or acquire this pet is by doing the archaeology quest which is active for the next two weeks. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Image credit to iDepeche mode from our head. Submitted their screenshot. Um, it takes about 20 minutes to an hour depending on how lucky you get and as a bonus you do get a few crates for making progress on any other archaeology things you might need to do. Although with the way Legion archaeology is, it's not a whole lot. The pet is worth about 40 to 50k on average most of the time but while the quest is up you might find a bunch for cheap. I know a buyer when I see now it's one. probably going to be the best time to pick it up because by the time the next one comes around people are going to be out of Legion content and busy with Battle for Azeroth. So there's not going to be as many people heading back to the old content to finish a quest line or to do Legion content. Unless you're a gold maker, of course. Uh, Genetic Sky on the Reddit also confirmed the value of the pet because they're a huge pet battler themselves. Um, what's it called? The Wormy Tunkins. Yeah. This pet is one of the best flavor of the month pets so far, though unknown in Battle for Azeroth, it looks like it will continue to be a valuable and desired pet. So if you've got the pets on your auction house for cheap, I'd probably suggest picking up a few for future returns. Or if you do enjoy digging a little bit, uh, you can head out and do the quest line and get your own pet on each of your characters. So you can start that in D New Dalaran and uh, do your Legion. Uh, archaeology. So that was a very short end to the blog for the fourth and final segment but the discussion point for this one uh, how much digging have you guys done in Legion if at all? Um, did you complete all of the archaeology quests or did you just do a few of them? I know I've only done the one for the, uh, the spirit moose mount. I haven't done the one for the pet. Uh, and what are you guys looking forward to with Battle for Azeroth Archaeology, if anything at all? So that's the final discussion point out of four sections. Doing good, being in IRL. Uh, it's a good weather, walking with girlfriend, doing some basketball and chilling, but now finally returned. Nice one, Chad Fan. Sounds like you've had a good day. You've done six quests, Ox Lotus. Yeah, the quest is going to come back in the future, Kojak, but it's uh, it's going to be classed as old content then, and probably the majority of players are going to dismiss it as irrelevant and not realize you can uh, trade the pet. So, I'm kind of sneaking a little bit of the bottom of the blog post here, if anybody caught some of that text. But it is the final edition of the, uh, the WoW Economy weekly wrap-up for May. And every month we do have a giveaway on the blog as well as a giveaway on the stream. And I'm very pleased to share that Wowhead has provided me with three Battle for Azeroth beta keys um, to win on the post itself. So if you'd like to get involved in that giveaway and leave a comment on the blog post itself by responding to any of the discussion points that, we've, uh, that are attached to each section of the blog and leave a comment on the Wowhead post itself. That will enter you in for a chance to win one of three Battle for Azeroth beta keys, which will be um, picked and announced by Friday, June 1st. So there's one week to enter into the giveaway for a Battle for Azeroth beta key. 
and there's a link to the uh, blog post itself in the chat if you'd like to go ahead and leave a comment and answer any of the discussion points at the bottom of each of the sections in the blog so you got the archaeology one you've got the time investment section with a discussion there and then you've also got uh, the milestones your objectives for goal making and of course the uh, return of the Zulgurub recipes and the uh, the pet charm change in Battle for Azeroth so there's a few different questions you can respond to in order to enter for the giveaway on the blog post itself and since we have finished chatting through the blog overall now um, we'll go ahead and pick a winner for the stream giveaway which is of course 30 days of WoW game time I'll give you guys a little bit of extra chance to uh, to get involved if you are listening on the Wowhead homepage or the blog post itself. We've got uh, 116 entries so far. Let's list this on here. So yeah, there is a little bit of subscriber luck turned on to give you guys who've been supporting the stream a little bit more chance to, uh, to win the game time. But it is open to both EU and NA players. So do come and type the word goblin in the stream chat and follow the stream in order to enter for your chance to win that game time. And we'll pick the winner in about a minute or so. So if you guys are listening, do feel free to get involved. And we'll pick a winner here in just a minute. But yeah, feel free to uh, ask any questions about the blog or goal making in general. I'll be continuing to stream here and uh, be paying a little bit more attention to the chat answer your guys questions and help you out with TSM and stuff Pleasure doing business with ya. and thank you very much for the host as well Sharp Dave very kind of you too late for the wrap-up what's what's up Nixie X we've just finished the wrap-up there and we're just about to pick a winner for the WoW game time Feel free to uh, type the word goblin in the chat and follow the stream if you haven't already. And uh, we'll be picking a winner here in a second. But thank you everybody for entering. 125 entries now. You sound scary in writing. I'll take that as a, uh, as a compliment AD. Thank you for joining in. So yeah, I'll have a quick scroll through the list of entries. If you see a blue dot beside your name, uh, you have been entered and in the list for the WoW game time giveaway. So if you don't see your name on the list here on the left hand side, do feel free to type the word goblin in the chat. And once I get to the bottom of the list, I'm gonna click the uh, the roll it winner button at the bottom here. Brought people over to get rich, only get them comfortable. That sounds good job, Dave. Thank you very much for the host. I see a lot of new names in the chat here. Do appreciate you guys joining in, joining in and tuning in today. Yeah, it's every last cop by tuning in. Been reading yours and other fully fledged goblins info. Appreciate what you do for the community. Sounds good, AD. Thank you very much for the kind words. Glad I could be of uh, of help. Oh, there's Ignis and Totems. I haven't seen Totems say anything in chat. Maybe I've just been subconsciously ignoring him. There's Jimbo. Oh, hey! The greatest prince on Azeroth, me. Oh my goodness, what's up 180 gram? Thank you so much for the sub. Very kind of you to use your free Amazon Prime sub on the channel this month. Let's see those crowns in the chat before we get to the bottom of the list of entries here. 139 now, maybe we'll get to 140. Anybody else just want to come and join in the giveaway? 30 days of game time up for grabs, open to both EU and NA. Just type the word goblin in the chat and click the follow button. Almost at the bottom here. Yes indeed, there's a little bit of subscriber look turned on. The guys who've been supporting the stream for a while now. Just has a little bit extra chance to uh, to win the giveaway on the stream today. Of course the subscriber look is not going to affect any entries for the beta key giveaway on the blog post. So almost down to the bottom here. Ubas hasn't entered. Oops, that was too fast. My hand slipped there. There we are. 
Tom Robbins, Bertas with Molly's entered. White Fox has not entered. Zippy90, Zoolander, there we go, 144 entries. I think we're going to go ahead and click the roller button. So it's going to be too late now if you have not entered. There's Veritas' last second entry. Let's click this button here. I got what you need. It's not even evening yet. Big Chocolate, one, two, three. Congratulations on winning. Do say something in the chat to claim your prize. You have been following since today. If we don't get a response from a Big Chocolate 123, we will go ahead and re-roll. Nice name, yeah. Rigged, rigged, rigged. Yeah, something like that. If it's rigged, it normally goes to Jack. But Regalthus won twice uh, in the past as well. But yeah, we'll give uh, Big Chocolate another 60 seconds or so. Otherwise, we will re-roll. What's up, Counter Miners? Max didn't work this time. Yeah. What's up, Max? Hope you're doing well today. Always happy for chocolate. Yes, indeed, with Molly. Hey, how you doing? So you can still enter. I think it's still adding in eligible users. I think uh, Jones at uh, 67 just entered. Confirm that. I have a deal for yes, you. indeed. So, still no response from Big Chocolate. Give him another 15 seconds. Still chance to enter before I click the roller button again. Type the way Goblin. So, no response from Big Chocolate, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and click the roller button. Bacon317, more chocolate, uh, more food related names, I should say. It's been following since January. And an instant reply there from Bacon. Congratulations on the 30 days of World Game Time. And thank you everybody for participating. Commiserations if you didn't win this week. But there is going to be another Game Time giveaway next week. Same time, same place. And if you didn't win the giveaway today on the stream, of course there is still the, uh, the beta key giveaway on the blog post itself, which is linked in the chat. You just have to leave a comment on the Wowhead post I got what you need. to enter for your chance to win a beta key. So just let me know which region you're in, Bacon. If you're on EU or if you're on NA. I'll be able to sort you out with uh, 30 days of game time. You're on NA, that's fantastic. I'll, uh, I'll be able to fire over a 30 day code for you after the stream. I don't like to uh, to do purchase stuff while I'm broadcasting just in case something does get shared it's not supposed to be shared. But yeah, commiserations if you didn't win this week but there is going to be another giveaway next week so do feel free to uh, to click that follow button to get notified when I go live for next week. I'm still aiming to do another stream or two in between, but uh, still quite difficult with my uh, with my new job here. But yeah, thanks everybody for joining me today on the Wowhead section. I'm going to go ahead and end all of the giveaway stuff. Let's take this off the screen here. 